When you read the book of Proverbs, which was mostly written by King Solomon, you will notice that many times, particularly in the first chapters, Solomon wrote, My son. Were these wise words intended to train his own son Rehoboam? I'm curious if Rehoboam ignored his father's words and instead followed in his father's footsteps. In other words, did Rehoboam decide to do what his father had done rather than what his father had said? We discovered some evidence that this was, unfortunately, correct. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 21, New King James Version And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he became king. He reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess. When Rehoboam began to reign, he was forty-one years old. He was a young man when he became king of an entire nation. In Jerusalem, he reigned for seventeen years. Rehoboam ascended to the throne during a period of great turmoil in the kingdom. Leaders frequently reveal their true colors in difficult situations because challenges bring out a person's fiber and character. The Council He Seeks Faced with trouble in his kingdom, Rehoboam traveled to Shechem, presumably to see if he could appease the people. The news reached Egypt, where Jeroboam had been living since his rebellion against Solomon, and he returned to Israel. Jeroboam was appointed as the people's spokesman right away. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 2-4, to New King James Version So it happened, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, he was still in Egypt, for he had fled from the presence of King Solomon and had been dwelling in Egypt, that they sent and called him. Then... Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came to spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. Jeroboam described the situation and the people's concern to Rehoboam. Your father made it difficult for us, they said. We will serve you if you will lighten our load. The people had a valid complaint. When Solomon was constructing the temple, he enlisted the help of approximately 30,000 people. Furthermore, the people were heavily taxed. Solomon was a slave driver rather than a shepherd of the people, as the kings of Israel were supposed to be. Government is supposed to be a boon, not a curse. The people demanded servant leadership. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 5 New King James Version. So he said to them, Depart for three days, then come back to me. And the people departed. Rehoboam requested some time to consider their case. Good leaders should not make rash decisions. We have no proof that he spent his three days in prayer. He also did not inquire of any of God's men about his desires. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 6 through 11. New King James Version. Then, King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived, and he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you will be a servant to these people today, and serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him, and consulted the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And he said to them, What advice do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you should speak to this people who have spoken to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. He did, however, seek legal counsel. So far, everything is going swimmingly. 
The importance of seeking counsel is emphasized in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, and Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22. First, he sought advice from his father's more senior advisors. Age does not make you an expert in everything, but he received sound advice in this case. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, New King James Version. Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, Amplified Bible. Where there is no counsel, purposes are frustrated, but with many counselors, they are accomplished. However, chapter 12 implies that Rehoboam had already made up his mind. When you've made up your mind, chances are you'll look around you until you find someone who agrees with you. After rejecting the advice of the elders, he sought the advice of his peers, show them whose boss they advised. These young men had the mistaken belief that the people were only there for them. They demanded to be treated with dignity. Today, I hear people say that they want to be respected. Respect can be earned, but it cannot be demanded. These young men were preoccupied with the privileges of leadership rather than the responsibilities of leadership. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 13 to 14, New King James Version. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. Three days later, Rehoboam received some bad advice, which he delivered to the people. Except for the tribe of Judah, his tough stance was rejected by all of Israel. The Conflict He Sees 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 16-17, New King James Version Now, when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now, see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the children of Israel, who dwelt in the cities of Judah. As a result of Rehoboam's folly, the kingdom was divided. It was divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom, known as Israel, and the southern kingdom, known as Judah. Rehoboam demolished in three days what his father and grandfather had spent 80 years constructing. He was confronted with rebellion. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 18, New King James Version Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was in charge of the revenue. But all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore King Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee to Jerusalem. In a stunning display of lack of statemanship, Rehoboam followed up his tough talk by dispatching the tax collector, who was stoned to death by the people. Rehoboam had to rush back to the palace. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 21, New King James Version And when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, that he might restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Rehoboam was still confused, so he decided to go to war to bring the northern tribes back into line. God intervened. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 22, New King James Version. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Kings chapter 12, verse 23 to 24, New King James Version. Speak to Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is from me. Therefore they obeyed the word of the Lord and turned back according to the word of the Lord. The prophet Shemaiah informed the king that the Lord had forbidden him from bearing arms. God overruled the immature king, revealing that the nation's division was part of his plan. 
Because of the foolish decision of young Rehoboam, the king refused to listen. The nation was inundated with idolatry, apostasy, and false religion. He instigated unbelievable strife. The change he supervises. 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 2-4, to New King James Version. And it happened in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord with twelve hundred chariots, sixty thousand horsemen, and people without number who came with him out of Egypt, the Lubam and the Sukkum and the Ethiopians. And he took the fortified cities of Judah and came to Jerusalem. Second Chronicles adds to our understanding of Rehoboam's tragic reign. Five years later, with Judah's idolatry increasing, God used Shishak of Egypt as a wake-up call. 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 5, New King James Version. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and the leaders of Judah, who were gathered together in Jerusalem because of Shishak, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, You have forsaken me, and therefore I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Shishak was knocking on the gates of Jerusalem when the prophet Shemaiah informed Rehoboam that this was not an accident. 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 6-7, New King James Version So the leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, The Lord is righteous. Now when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves, therefore I will not destroy them but I will grant them some deliverance. My wrath shall not be poured out on Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. God relented after the people humbled themselves. Judah was humiliated, but God protected them. Shishak was able to loot the palace grounds and take 300 solid gold shields made by Solomon. Gold is an unadulterated metal. It is the yardstick against which value is measured. But here was a king who made rash decisions and led his people astray into idolatry and sin. Because the country was in such disarray, Rehoboam substituted shields of brass, a cheap imitation, in place of the gold shields. The Bible says that when Rehoboam died at the age of 58, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. That phrase sums up his entire life. What is the one sentence that God would write about you if you died today? Rehoboam left behind a divided nation that was poorer than when he found it. We intend to leave a legacy for our family, our church, our country, and our generation. Let us make certain that we leave gold shields. A leader cannot connect with people solely through group communication. He must also connect with individuals. The stronger the bond and relationship between individuals, the more likely the follower will want to assist the leader. Some leaders struggle because they believe that it is the responsibility of their followers to connect. Successful leaders, on the other hand, always take the initiative. They take the first step and then work hard to maintain their relationships. When a leader has done the work to connect with his people, it is visible in how the organization operates. Employees demonstrate exceptional loyalty and a strong work ethic. The people aspire to the leader's vision. The impact is enormous. Connection requires giving. The power-hungry Rehoboam was more interested in flexing his political muscles than in connecting with his people. Check your motivations if you want to connect with others. Selfishness and insecurity are often at the root of those who are unable to see beyond themselves. Clearly, Rehoboam was never able to see beyond himself. His bullying earned him contempt rather than respect. Connect with others, keep an open mind, and remember that leadership is a privilege.